So today we are going to present a bit about reusable food packaging and the fairly wide multi-stakeholder debate that's been taking place about the safety of reusable food packaging and the SARS-CoV-2 virus that causes COVID-19 um, and how it relates to the pandemic that many of us are currently still in today. We've been following this issue at the Food Packaging Forum for the past few months, um, and we want to present an overview of some of the biggest developments and tell a bit of the story behind the discussions that are still ongoing. In mid-March, there was a study that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine that looked at the survivability and the stability of the virus itself on different types of materials. And for food packaging, the biggest outcome that came from this was that it found in laboratory conditions that the virus was able to live at a certain level of concentration up to 72 hours on plastic and on stainless steel and up to 24 hours on cardboard. So this brought about the discussion could food packaging considered to be a vector to transfer the virus between, con between consumers at grocery stores and so on? Governments initially announced this as being a low concern, um, especially compared to the respiratory route of transmission that is believed still to be the most important route. In the US, the Food and Drug Administration released a statement on one of their websites saying that there's currently no evidence of human or animal food or food packaging being associated with the transmission of the virus. However, they did say that if you want to out of an extra step of precaution, you can wipe down packaging and let it air dry. At the German Federal Institute of Risk, they announced uh, similar recommendations and said that there's no evidence that food packaging is a route of exposure that is significant, and they recommended to follow general hygiene rules, such as regular hand washing. More recently, a couple of weeks ago, at the end of May, they updated their Frequently Asked Questions page to mention that theoretically, of course, the transmission is possible and cannot be ruled out across surfaces such as food packaging. However, based on the relatively low stability of the virus itself in the actual environment, not in a laboratory setting, they estimate it's only probable that transmission could occur within a very short time window after the virus has been transferred onto a surface. Soon after this study in the journal came out, there began discussions from different stakeholders about whether this should and how this should affect prioritizing types of packaging that consumers use. Focusing on the EU, on April 8th, the European Plastic Converters Industry Association sent a letter to the European Commission requesting that they delay the upcoming single-use plastics directive that's set to start coming stage-wise into force over the next few years. They argue that the Commission did not take into account the hygienic consequences of banning or reducing single-use plastics. And they included links to several studies that they say repeatedly show that plastic is the material of choice for ensuring hygiene safety, as well as preservation from contamination with food. This letter and similar letters that also were sent um, by manufacturers to government agencies in the US started this larger question of should single use packaging restrictions that are currently being discussed or already in the first steps of being implemented, should they be delayed specifically in response to this pandemic that we are, have been going through. And especially related to reusable efforts of reusable packaging, should these movements and initiatives to promote this be paused for safety reasons or hygiene reasons? These are a few pictures of some of the most well-known examples that you've probably um, heard of or seen. On the left here, we have a disposing system of the, um, um, a disposing system from Nestle that's being trialed right now at a few of their stores in Switzerland for coffee and also for pet food. The Loop um, platform that sends consumers reusable containers through the post for certain items with brands that they have been working with. 
And also there's been many, many coffee stores and chains that have been promoting reusable cup return systems for consumers to use in store. This prompted mixed reactions from governments about this topic. And in the US, it resulted in many states actually pausing, delaying, or canceling recycling and single use laws. California had a plastic ban in place, plastic bag ban in place that they have paused or had paused because of the pandemic. And then Washington state was actually considering introducing new legislation and discussing the introduction of it in the next coming months to improve recycled, the amount of recycled content in food packaging, but that has been canceled, largely cited to uh, it not being a priority and the increased costs that would come from handling that right now in the midst of the pandemic and the economic impact that it's already having across the economy. In Thailand, this was the year that was set out to be a wide-scale expansion of a single-use plastic bag ban across the country, especially within large retailers. And so it was supposed to be spreading into small retailers as well. However, that had been, has been largely put on hold. Um, and instead, there's been reported, a reported 60% increase in uh, plastic waste in April compared to 2019. Recently, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in the US put out a non-binding, non-legally binding set of recommendation and consideration for restaurants as they start to reopen um, towards the end of the pandemic or as states allow opening to begin. And those guidelines did say that restaurants should avoid using or sharing items that are reusable. And they mentioned digital menus and single serving condiments. Um, this could then also understandably apply to utensils, cups and plates, and other tableware. In the EU, the view has been a little bit different from what we've seen. There is the single-use plastic directives that the um, European plastic converters asked the Commission to delay. Uh, and very clearly, the Commission responded that there are no plans to delay that directive and that member states in the EU still have the agreed amount of time to implement um, the new rules through their national legislations. Also recently, the European Union published their farm to fork strategy. And within that strategy, it was specifically mentioned um, that this, there will be increased support for the use of innovative and sustainable packaging solutions, in particular, reusable um, food packaging. In response to all of this, and especially in response to the calls from the manufacturers to delay single-use legislation, there was a response from NGOs. The Break Free from Plastic Coalition also sent a letter on April 24th to the European Commission, um, arguing that the industry and manufacturers are trying to capitalize on fears from the COVID-19 pandemic, and that the messages that they're pushing regarding the safety of reusable materials are false. They specifically called out the studies, the scientific studies that were included in the industry's letter, calling them scientifically unfounded and looking into each of them specifically. And an argument that's being made is that regardless of whether food packaging is reusable or single use, the virus can still survive on the surface of plastics and stainless steel as shown by the earlier studies that we know about so far. Instead, uh, the NGOs are encouraging governments to focus on investing in businesses and redesign our current food packaging system to make it more resilient and prevent this from being an issue in the future if we were to have more pandemics. So thinking about reuse, a quick overview of what systems or some of the main systems there are that currently exist. Most well known is likely the Springer own container, BYO containers, um, that many stores allow customers to bring um, packaging from home that they then fill. So single use articles aren't needed. Um, there are even some stores, of course, that have their own systems in place where you bring the cup to the store each time you use it and they offer you a discount. On, on some of the products you purchase. Alternatively, 
on the right side here, there are systematic cleaning and sterilization systems, much like you would expect um, of how a restaurant would clean your plates and utensils after you sit down to dine. Um, businesses can set up reuse systems with food packaging or containers that's shared across different businesses in the local community or across a chain, and then have a system in place so that customers bring back the containers for takeout items, and they're systematically cleaned and washed by the establishment and not by the consumer, so that um, there's no contact at all between refilling the container um, and the container being contaminated as it was brought from the customer's home. Deposit return schemes are common to refill containers that have been used. This is a picture from a reverse vending machine that exists in Germany. Um, this is spread across a few European countries and also US states that apply a fee uh, onto every container that's purchased to cover the costs uh, of bringing it back and to which can encourage consumers to return the container for reuse. And then similar and related, um, but not quite the same, is this general concept of a zero waste lifestyle, where the famous picture of someone showing you a glass with all of the waste they produced in one year, with the goal being completely uh, move away from single use products and all reusable products. It should be encouraged. So if reuse is going to continue, how can it be ensured that it's done safely, especially in the times of the pandemic today? Systematic washing and sanitizing following food laws is being encouraged by stakeholders as the primary approach. Um, bring your own container options are of course convenient for our customers, but to ensure that everything is following health codes, having a system in place at the establishment to wash and sanitize containers, just like they do tableware, is being encouraged as the best way forward. Installing on-site reuse systems and cleaning systems to do this, rather than relying on customers to do it, um, is the best way. However, if that's not an option and there's not systems already in place to do this and customers are going to bring their own containers, it's being recommended to just avoid contact with the containers themselves. That can mean that in grocery stores, customers are bagging their own groceries. They're not placing the reusable shopping bags actually on the belt during checkout. And the same for takeout restaurants, when putting food into the customer's container, contact is avoided that there's ever um, the, the serving utensil and the container touching surfaces and totally trying to avoid the risk of transmission between the two surfaces. This has been discussed in much more detail in resources that have been developed by the NGO Upstream. They created a fact sheet specifically looking into these questions regarding um, COVID-19 and the reuse of food packaging and food packaging containers, food containers. And the food packaging forum has also been a part of a few webinars over the past few weeks. This one here uh, with Zero Waste Europe specifically discussing COVID-19 and the zero waste movement and also how reuse plays a role in that. All of this information and links to read more about it are on Food Packaging Forum's Coronavirus and Packaging page. We have been updating this uh, since mid-March with links to um, scientific articles, blog posts, videos, um, and our own news articles trying to summarize uh, relevant issues on this topic, and we will continue to update there as things develop over the next few weeks. If you have any questions, please do consult the page uh, or send us an email at info at fp-forum.org. And thanks for your attention.